Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about the short time Fourier transform and the spectrogram is basically the output of the STFT, is the visualization of the time varying spectra that we compute. So in this uh, demonstration class I want to use the spectrogram, the short time Fourier transform, to analyze uh, a voice sound so that we can understand better the STFT and at the same time understand better a given uh, sound. So we'll start uh, with a sonic visualizer and uh, this is the sound I, I want to analyze. Uh, it's a note of a soprano uh, singing. Let's hear that. Okay, that's a quite uh, high pitch uh, sound. Uh, and it has uh, quite a bit of uh, vibrato, this uh, frequency oscillation uh, that is characteristic of operatic singing. And uh, to understand a little bit better this sound, let's open the spectrogram. So let's open the pane of the spectrogram. So here it is. And so we see now clearly uh, some information of uh, this uh, voice sound. We see these horizontal lines that correspond to the harmonics. And we see this oscillation which is uh, basically this uh, uh, vibrato that is uh, present. To uh, go a little bit deeper, let's open another pane with a single spectrum of uh, this uh, time varying spectrogram. So let's uh, first show it as uh, in a linear scale, the horizontal axis. Let's have lines as interpolation. And the window, let's use the same window done for the STFT, so we'll use 1024. Okay, and this is it. Let's maybe make it zoom in and stretch so that uh, we see same things that we would see in the spectrogram. Okay, so this is one slice of the spectrogram. So all these horizontal lines correspond to these peaks that we see here. Okay, and now maybe let's, uh, let's uh, change um, uh, things. Let's change, for example, the, the window size. If we change uh, to 256, uh, both uh, analysis, okay, now what we are seeing is a, a, a much smoother shape. We are not seeing the individual harmonics. We are just seeing an overall shape which basically correspond to what we call the formants, the resonances of the vocal track, which is what uh, makes uh, uh, us be able to distinguish between vowels, for example. So each vowel has a characteristic uh, form and structure. Of course, if we move, uh, things will change a little bit, but of course the vowel remains the same, so it will not change that much. If we go back to uh, the, the analysis size that allows us to visualize the harmonics, and when we move, well, we see a few more changes because the harmonics are changing more than just the formants. Okay, so now if we want to change the type of window, we can go to the, the preferences and in the analysis tab, and let's put this away from this, here in the last option we see the window, the analysis window uh, to be used. Okay, currently is the Blackman window. Okay. Let's change for example to the re rectangular window which is this, uh, the square uh, that we cut the signal very abruptly. Let's apply that. Okay, so clearly it doesn't look so nice. A single spectrum looks with quite a lot of uh, kind of uh, noise, uh, with a, the noise floor is very high, so we see very few of the harmonics. And in the spectrogram we see these uh, uh, vertical lines with this kind of uh, a distortion of it. Okay, so that's uh, clearly not that good, so we definitely would prefer for this sound the Blackman window. Okay, now let's do the same kind of analysis using the SMS tools. Okay, with the SMS tools uh, we have uh, the, the single spectrum uh, using the DFT option or the time varying uh, spectrogram using the STFT option. So let's first start with a single spectrum. Let's go to the, to the uh, soprano uh, sound, so soprano uh, E4. Okay, and let's uh, analyze in the middle of the sound, like 0.5. And 
and let's use the same values that we used before 1024 for both FFT size and window size with a Blackman window and we can compute Okay, and this is basically what we uh, saw before this is the 1024 samples we have started with this is the magnitude and phase spectrum and we see clearly the peaks corresponding to the, the harmonics and in here we see the phase spectrum which we didn't see before and also we see the inverse of this so this is the windowed signal that we generate back by taking the inverse FFT of uh, this spectrum and of course we can do the same thing we can change windows for example if we change the window size to 256 and also the FFT size 256 in the same location we compute well we see uh, we are of course taking much less samples and the spectra are mm, uh, much uh, smoother less uh, information there one advantage, of course, that uh, the, with uh, this uh, interface we have is that we can independently control the window size from the FFT size. So we can put the FFT size 1024 and maybe a window size not that large, maybe 801. And when we compute, okay, we are taking less samples than before, but still the frequency resolution is quite good and it, it's quite smooth because we have been doing zero padding and so the the shape of the spectrum is quite uh, nice okay let's look at all these uh, from the short time Fourier transform perspective from the spectrogram so we will uh, get the same sound okay and again let's uh, put uh, 1024 1024 and the hop size has to be at least uh, much smaller than the window size in a way that the overlap add factor adds correctly so for 1024 in the Blackman window at least we need one fourth so uh, let's put uh, 256 and we compute okay and this is the result so we have the input signal the magnitude spectrogram the phases of uh, uh, as the, the time varying phases and the output sound and the output sound well it's very much the same than the original because we have done a good reconstruction with a good overlap however if this overlap is not correctly set for example let's put um, uh, let's put the same than the window size for example 1024 and let's compute it well clearly now is something wrong in the output signal and if we can listen to it okay of course we see this modulation that is at the frame rate because we are not overlapping correctly so at every frame we see a burst of sound and uh, they don't balance out by the overlap factor so we definitely need to have a much smaller hop size and anyway, that's all, uh, all I wanted to say. Basically, I encourage you to uh, play around with these parameters. You can change the window size, you can change uh, the FFT size, the hop size, the type of window, and in between the DFT and the STFT, I believe you can get a good grasp of all these different parameters and the effect they have in the visualization of the spectrogram and also in the reconstruction of uh, the signal. So let's uh, just finish and um, okay today basically we have uh, used sonic visualizer to uh, to analyze uh, voice sound and to visualize the the spectrogram and the individual spectrum we have also done the same thing with the interface of the sms tools and of course we have used uh, the sound this uh, soprano sound uh, from uh, free sound so this uh, hopefully has given you uh, a more practical uh, view on the, on the STFT and uh, has allowed you to understand how uh, useful might be uh, to use this type of uh, techniques to visualize a particular sound, in this case uh, a soprano sound. 
Of course, uh, this is just uh, the, the beginning of this more uh, an analysis, this more complex analysis. So in next, in next uh, demonstration class, we're going to analyze a more complex sound and we will see how we can uh, uh, analyze time varying sounds that are, uh, have much more structure and how we can use this uh, spectrogram analysis uh, to get some insights on that. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you in next class.